My name is Iggy Tan. I'm the Managing Director of Alltech Chemicals, a, a publicly listed Australian company, and we are focused on uh, battery materials uh, for the lithium-ion battery industry. We've been very much focused on getting our technology to get silicon in graphite anodes and Recently, we've had very promising results. Okay, good to see you, mate. Um, I haven't seen you since January, but I just wanted to kind of update because it was the, the technology intrigued me and the applications clearly yeah, intrigued me. But um, I see that you have um, you basically announced the, the, the pilot plant design is completed and you've appointed some engineers. And I suspect that's what I'm looking at behind you, is it? Uh, absolutely. This is the commercial plant that we're looking at. So we've launched a pre-feasibility study for... Uh, a 10,000 ton per annum battery materials plan to be situated in Saxony, Germany. Now, just to refresh the viewers, what our technology is, um, I guess the industry has been trying to solve the silicon code because uh, silicon has 10 times the energy capacity than graphite. And if you can incorporate silicon in your lithium battery, you are going to get a higher energy density. Now, the problem is that with silicon, uh, it expands about 300% in volume and fractures, and it also has a very large first cycle loss. Uh, and the industry has been trying to resolve these problems for, for many years. And our company, uh, using uh, alumina coating technology, uh, seems to have resolved this problem. So we can coat silicon particles as well as graphite particles and put put it together into an anode material. And we recently announced uh, a battery that is 30% higher energy density than the conventional lithium ion battery. So very exciting, game changing results. But, and, but you're, you're, you're rushing ahead here. Um, and, and so trying to stay on the front foot with all of this. So with regards to the, the, um, the, the, the plant in Germany, um, you've, you've got to finance that, obviously. Um, so can you just, Talk to us about how, how this thing gets financed and more importantly, in terms of um, partners or contracts or JVs or whatever other kind of relationships you feel that you're going to have in a country, where are you? Yeah, so part of the process is that we're doing a lot of laboratory work, uh, but we're, we're also running the commercialization process uh, in tandem. So we, we have commenced a pre-feasibility study for this plant, but we've also commenced a work or engineering work on a pilot plant because we realize that um, materials that we intend to produce needs to go into the market. Uh, it needs to be tested uh, through the qualification process of these major European battery makers, as well as the European car manufacturers. We have um, NDAs with a couple of automakers in Europe and also an NDA with a, a large battery maker in Europe and so the job of the pilot plan is to produce materials that can then go into the market and be fully tested. But meanwhile, uh, we, we are also commencing on the pre-feasibility study for the commercial plan, which is around 10,000 tonnes per annum of this silicon anode material, uh, which we, we call it as solumina anodes. Right. So I want to see where the I want to see where the degree of confidence comes from because you've got you've got a product right which you're saying um, it can ex, it, it can basically um, extend the life of uh, sorry the, the the range that batteries can deliver or make the batteries smaller depending on which the whatever the use case is so automotive manufacturers are going to be interested in that but how interested are they in the sense NDAs are one thing but having a kind of commercial arrangement even if it's a kind of precursor to something bigger that's where I, I suspect shareholders and you will get the confidence from so in terms of the conversation what's that path to um, getting something signed up like that yeah you're, you're perfectly correct uh, you you want to eventually have an offtake deal with one of the major battery makers or car makers uh, but so we're working towards that and, and part of that process is to actually produce product that they can then get into batteries uh, and do the some of the long range testing for these batteries uh, as you know in a lot of these batteries they have to run over thousands of cycles so you need the, the product to be able to supply that and uh, the pilot plan is essentially uh, what we're going to do to pr uh, produce this product. Now, the engineering for the pilot plans have been completed. 
We've now appointed a German engineering company, Kutner, and, and they've just commenced the engineering process. And very shortly, they'll be looking to procure some of the key equipment for the pilot plan, and then we'll go into construction. So you are correct. We do need the offtake, and we're working towards it. But it is a set process uh, of getting there. Okay, so I, I got a little bit excited about the technology last time we spoke, right? And, and so I'm just wondering, is is that replicated in, in in the market? Because like I understand the normal process of, you know, pilot plants and demonstration plants, and, and you know, allowing um, putting product into market to to test. But and those are very simple things, and they can be whatever it could be, you know, lithium or cobalt or whatever whatever the kind of basic pro, um, product is. You've got something here which could dramatically change the economics of for the car manufacturers. And if if they like it, they'd have to dramatic or could dramatically change the design of their car. So you'd think that they'd want to step in a little bit earlier and get confidence that way. So are any is there any way to extract any economics from that situation before getting a you know a fuller, more complete offtake agreement down the line? I mean, is there a queuing system? Yeah. So let, let me just correct you. This is uh, drop-in technology. Uh, nothing in the car needs to change. Nothing in the lithium battery needs to change because on the anode side of the lithium battery, you've got graphite uh, material that is bonded against uh, copper plates. Essentially, you're going to still have the same black material, a graphite material, uh, with some silicon, uh, alumina coated silicon. And so for the uh, car, the battery makers, there's no change. So it's drop in technology. Uh, they'll just use the same black powder. Uh, but the black powder that they'll be using uh, will have 30% higher energy density. So uh, to give you an example, graphite has around 300 milliamps per hour per gram. That's the, the amount of energy density. Our material has about 430 milliamps per hour per gram. So you can see suddenly that's just a big step change uh, from the energy ca capacity. And you are rightly pointed out that a lot of the car manufacturers, uh, they'll be looking at the same range, but reducing the size of the battery and the weight of the battery. And by doing that, the cost of the battery comes down. So game-changing technology, and part of the challenge is there's no such, there's no product today that does that. So it's brand new product that we have to get to the market. And obviously there are challenges with a brand new product, but because we, it's the first of its kind, they're also a big, a big price at the end for getting it right. Okay, and so what's the total cost of the um, the build of the uh, demo plant? A pilot we're plant, I should say. The so. pilot plan will be about five to six million uh, Aussie dollars. We we have the funds for that. We raised money last year. We raised about ten million, so we're fully funded to 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 complete that pilot plan. Uh, and um, we have the site. I mentioned that we purchased the site uh, also uh, last year. We acquired the site, and uh, next to the site there is some building infrastructure. We have now leased some of the warehouses in there specifically to build a pilot plant. So we don't need to build a building. There are buildings that are on site that we can then incorporate uh, a pilot plant and so on. So we, we're in the process of recruiting people uh, that will then uh, operate that pilot plant. Okay, fantastic. So that's that. So we'll, 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 we'll wait, to, wait to hear from you about how that how that move, moves forward. On the HPA yeah. side of things, if we may, you put out a, um, a note um, with regards to you know how that is advancing. Can you give me any update? That was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so on the uh, high purity alumina project, as you know, we've got a high purity alumina project where we extract kaolin out of Australia and we convert the kaolin into a high purity alumina in Malaysia, in Johor. Uh, we've already started some of the construction and the moment the, the project is on hold to get to the final construction uh, finance. Uh, we announced to the market that they, we're going for the green bond process for the secondary loan. Our senior loan is already done with a German bank or KFW IPEX bank. Uh, the secondary loan we're moving through is with the green bond process. Uh, the, the marketing of that uh, bond has gone out. Uh, there are up to 80 groups that have registered interests uh, to receive the information memorandum. And we've already started uh, presenting to some of these groups. And some of these groups have already 
uh, commence looking at the uh, data room. So the, some of them, it's a, the due, di due diligence process has started. No, I was about to say, so we, we, that's the 100, because we, we talked last time out around, it's the need for 400 million bucks. Um, but we talked last time about 100 million being the green bond. Here it's 144 million um, for the bond issue. 44 yeah. of that seems to be against servicing interest during the construction phase. Is it, is it are green bonds, are they typically that sort of quantum? I mean, it's, it seems expensive. So the, the green bonds uh, that we're looking at are five year bonds. So they, uh, um, and you know, the, the idea is of raising the extra 44 million is to service the bonds during the construction and ramp up phase because your, your plant's not producing anything, you're not earning any money. And so we, we give them some surety by servicing the bonds through this amount. And then when the plant gets up and running, then obviously there's cash flow to then support the, uh, the coupon rates on the bonds. Uh, I also wanted to mention that in that announcement, we talked about the equity side. We're, we're chasing 100 million to find a, a joint venture partner for the project. Uh, and we've appointed a, a U.S. group called Del Morgan, uh, and Del Morgan uh, currently in the process of looking for a, uh, a equity partner, uh, and their process has uh, been running the same as the green bond process. There's interest. We've started talking to various groups and presenting to them, and some of them have gone into the data room as well. So. Um, secondary debt by the green bond process and then 100 billion of equity and uh, and the both process are, are still running okay right okay so we'll we'll wait to hear on that one so the the yeah. any strategic partner coming in at this point is going to take i mean i think you're suggesting so 49 percent equity partner for 49 percent yeah, yeah equity of the project yeah, yeah okay um and 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 in terms of that strategic partner what, what do you mean by strategic it, because that can mean a lot of things, right? It could just mean finance. It could mean, obviously, you've got the technology side of things and button down, but they may have distribution or access that you don't. So what are you actually trying to find? Well, um, I guess any sort of partner, uh, but they're strategic in that they believe that uh, the growth in the HPA sector and, uh, and the growth in the lithium battery sector, because essentially HPA is servicing either LEDs or the lithium ion battery sector. So... Um, and and um, and you know we're talking to various groups uh, around the world. Has that been made harder by events in uh, Ukraine? Uh, well, I, I think uh, Ukraine has just uh, happened recently, and I guess there will be some pressure uh, on the markets, and we've seen that. Um, but you know we we are still optimistic, and we'll. Uh, keep the the both process uh, going. Okay. Now I'm I'm just wondering if you if you have a view on you know do do the sanctions on Russia change things for for you? Is that the you know that the, the the sorts of markets that you thought were available to you or are they uncertain at the moment? Are they are they, are they waiting to see what's going on? I mean, you know, and well, does it delay well, things? I, think, I guess. Uh, I think you've seen uh, the oil price shoot up, and I don't know about you in the UK, but uh, the the prices on the pump has really gone up, and so there'll be more focus on electric vehicles and lithium ion batteries and so on. So uh, renewable power will not go away, and I think this will probably uh, put a a lot of focus uh, on that.